Howdy folks, welcome to Suburban Biology. My name is Kit, your humble host. I wanted my house to run on rainwater, so I built a giant steel retaining wall. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did that. The reason I built a giant steel retaining wall in my backyard is because I wanted to cram in a 30,000 gallon rain tank in between the rear easement of my property and my workshop. Anybody interested in seeing that full video, I'll leave a link in the description when it's ready. This video is for folks that are more interested in just the retaining wall itself. So the reason I went with sheet steel is because one, it looks awesome. Two, I already knew how to work with sheet steel. And three, because I had to work in such tight quarters with my workshop. As you can see, the slab of my workshop is about six inches away from the retaining wall. And I had to drop down more than two feet to get a level surface to put the big rain tank on. Because of that, sheet steel was about the only thing I could think of that I could pull that off in such tight quarters. Anyway, I think the retaining wall turned out beautifully and I figured there might be a whole mess of people out there interested in how to build a wall like this. I'm not saying this is how the wall should be built, this is just how I did it. But with any wall plan project, you need to begin with the end in mind. So I figured I'd show you the end point. Now let's go look at the beginning. I'm gonna kind of bring y'all in to look at a little closer. The orange line marks where the tank uh, pad is gonna cut real near to my workshop ramp. Now the next step is gonna be forming the uh, retaining wall along that orange line. I'm gonna drop down low so y'all can see the height difference. So that's gonna be about a two foot of earth, three foot tall wall. And then over here on my trailer is the piece of steel that I plan on using. So it's a five by 10 sheet. I plan on cutting a three foot strip. I just figured I'd show y'all how that goes. Not the straightest cut. I'm gonna put the slightly crooked side down. The next shot that actually makes sense to show you fine folks, come back over here, dig out the soil next to the ramp, and then y'all can watch me get on the struggle bus and try and put that piece of steel on that orange line. And then I'm gonna drill some holes, pass some rebar reinforcement rods through it. I'm gonna weld one end to the bracket, the other end to the wall, and that's gonna hold it in place. So uh, right here we got three brackets mounted on the, the ramp into the cement. I'm going to be welding the steel wall that I'm about to set in here. I'll weld it to those brackets. So all these little rebar spikes, vertical, pounded about down about two feet. So they go below even the point where I dug. All those verticals are welded to that common horizontal. And that is holding the soil under the workshop. There were some boulders here. I had to break out my hammer drill and drill through those. Man, that sure makes you think about stonework. I don't know how they built the pyramids, but I doubt it was with copper tools.
Do a little bit of a close-up of exactly what I did. Disclaimer, while I'm showing you this, I am not an engineer. So what, what I did was I drilled a hole and then I cut a little length of rebar. I passed it through the hole. I set it on top of that bracket and then I put some super hot welds so it stuck to the bracket and stuck to the wall. And then I went around and I filled the periphery of the rod. I did a nice big weld around that. That's what's gonna hold it in the curved shape. And then I'm gonna backfill about four or five inches of dirt uh, coming up above that. So once you tamp that down, the dirt itself will hold the curvature on the bottom. And then these points will hold the curvature up toward the top. This is the technique I'm using when it comes to points that are not next to the cement ramp. So obviously on the cement ramp, you're able to bolt stuff to the cement. But in these portions, I welded this cross member on there. The concept is that when, if this wants to go out, it's gonna have to pull that bar through the soil, obviously in, in a, it's a super long bar to just come plowing through earth. It, it, there's no incentive. So I'm hoping once I pack this earth in, I'll be able to undo my bracing here when all is said and done. I will still be approximately level and we'll let you guys see that and fast forward. Wanted to take a brief moment to describe how I'm bending the sheet metal as I weld it together. Forgive the sirens in the background, it's the 4th of July and apparently the city is setting fire to itself. So I uh, put kind of two bends in each sheet as I weld it to the bigger ring. So the first bend is primarily to get 
the joint right here, I'm gonna zoom in, I want that joint flat against each other. So I got these clamped with C-clamps, I got a brick there, this thing's called an air shim I picked up at the orange store, got a bottle jack, so I'm really doing what I can to bend these two sheets so they're pretty much coplanar, then I weld them together, and then I worry about getting the whole bigger uh, piece of metal, the entire ring, to line up on the yellow line, sorry, in the middle of the circle right here. I put a string on that, tied a loop in it, and I put a spray paint can, and I paint, you know, over and over. You've probably seen through the videos the color reappear around the perimeter. And that's kind of the ultimate goal is to get this big piece of sheet metal that I'm welding into one giant piece. Uh, I want it lying on the ring. Well, that is a boneheaded place to put the laser level. Sorry, y'all. That's been blocking your view for the last few seconds at least. Haven't talked about it a lot, but these are the jacks I use. They're typically used to jack up the uh, kind of joist of a basement, uh, but just park the tractor. A heavy object helps push out on the wall. They're adjustable. It's just a threaded shaft uh, with a flat part on it that you put a crescent wrench on to adjust it outward. And then I didn't show y'all this yet. Every now and then, I've been pounding in a rebar about a foot or two if I can, and then I weld to the bottom of the, the sheet, and that helps hold the bottom as I kind of work on the top. And in general, I've been aiming for a curvature that uh, if when in doubt, I want it tipping outward like that because I haven't backfilled the soil yet, and when I add soil back in there in the future, that's gonna add additional pressure near the top of the wall and that will tend to push the wall in this way. So I'm trying to kind of tip the wall out that way, preload it in that shape. That way when the soil's poured back in and there's more soil on the outside than on the inside, that'll help bend things back to the correct shape.
All right, folks, nearing completion of welding the retaining wall. I figured I'd bring you in close to see. There's a little bit less digging if I can kind of combine trenches. So in this case, I uh, only had to dig basically one straight line and that serves as kind of the T-bar for all three of those. And I'm gonna trim the corners off, all these little pointy ends, the little pointy bits. I don't want people falling on this, getting hurt, uh, little kids and such. I did it, the wall's up. We'll see if it holds up. Yeah, so I'm gonna get me out of this shot. I'm all stanky and sweaty. There it is. For all intents and purposes, this retaining wall is now complete. Because of how much I reinforced it, I don't even think it's necessary for me to close this ring off for it to be structurally sound. But I'm still gonna add a band of steel on the edge here, but only because I'm about to add six inches of sand and a giant water tank. Like I said, this video is meant for folks that are just interested in how to build the steel retaining wall. And then after the tank is up, I plan on doing some videos that show the world how the gutter works are, the downspouts, and then the underground pipes, how all that works. So I plan on doing that after the tank videos. Anyway, please follow along. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share it with friends, watch the whole video till the end. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining. We'll see you on the next one.